record. Okay. Uh, this is the 7th of September, and this is for English 101. Today we're moving a bit forward, and it's going to be quite fast. So as usual, we turn off cell phones and we pay attention. Yes? My students always pay attention anyway. That's why I have such a high pass rate. Nobody fails. And the people who fail, I just find them and shoot them. So that's how it's a problem. <laughs> okay. What are we looking at, my friends? We're looking at the two big distinctions or the two big divisions into which we will divide the written page. These are form or structure on the one hand, which tells us how, and the content, theme, or message on the other hand, which tells us what. What is the message being conveyed to us, and how does the writer convey it? Now, I'm going to be summarizing some of the introductions to the early chapters in the book. OK, that's the compact reader. How many of us have, raise hands for me, please, have access online? Excuse me a minute. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks, sorry about that. Question. I'm sorry about that. Around this time, if you have been on the road since 7 o'clock, you need lunch. Mm -hmm. I can't give you permission to bring a sandwich or to bring lunch in here. Of course, I cannot. Okay, can we continue? <laughs> Okay, now we're looking at those two big subdivisions of the written page. And if you've had a peep at your book, The Compact Reader, you will have noticed that they actually do these nice detailed introductions to each chapter. Uh, what are two of the basic types of writing or types of paragraph that we wish to absolutely meet and be aware of? exposition and argument stroke persuasion. What is exposition? The older textbook would, textbooks would call it explanatory writing or really explanation. In other words, good writers are going to give us their message by doing what? Explaining it, analyzing it, discussing it. They are not going to ex expect that we will just accept whatever message they have for us, whatever point of view they have. You know, we just accept it blindly, hook, hook, line, and sinker, you know. They're not going to hit us over the head with it. They are going to do what? Discuss it, analyze it, explain it. That's what exposition does. Okay. And exposition often goes along with its best friend forever argument, or persuasion, yes? In other words, most writers have an argument, a point of view, or a message that they wish to give us. Yes or no? Exactly. Or they wouldn't bother to write. Remember that many of these articles that we use in the textbook, or that I will bring you for your portfolio, are actually written by professional writers. So can we learn from their methods? Yes. Of course. And do they have a message that they wish to get across to us? And the best writers will not just hit us over the head with the message and expect us to, to just say, yes, ma'am. They will do what? They will discuss it, analyze it, explain it. In other words, they will usually combine their exposition with nicely with their persuasion stroke argument. Now, some writers will also bring in another aspect, 
another building block of the written page. And this is, of course, another type of writing, narration, storytelling, that involves action events. Now, we've all seen these things on TV, these horrible soap operas that are older than all of you. Yes, all of you put together. You know, the young and the restless, the bold and the beautiful, etc., etc. Oh, and these go on and on forever. But what do you notice about them if, if you have a moment to listen to them or watch them? They're filled with happenings, events. Something is always happening, yes? But we're not sure what the events really mean. If there's one message I have gotten from The Bold and the Beautiful, which I used to watch years ago when I thought I had the time, was what? Mind your own business. Do not get involved with your family's private affairs. And do not sleep with your brother-in-law. <laughs> Isn't that one of the messages we get? <laughs> well, maybe you didn't see that one. It, Fascinating. Okay, but good narration is not like that. Good narration carefully selects the events and carefully um, pilots them towards the message. In other words, good narration organizes the happenings, the events, in such a way that actually they support the final message. And in fact, by the time we're halfway through reading good narration, at the back of our minds, we have an idea what the overall message is. Okay. But when we're looking at happenings, are we looking at narration? But they are not just happenings, you know, that happen and happen and happen in the soap opera style. They are happenings that lead us towards the message or what? The thesis. Yes? Okay. And they happen within a time frame. They don't go on and on forever like the bold and the beautiful and the young and the restless. You understand? Okay. Then, of course, what's the last type of writing? We don't see it as a major type of writing, but we may see it as a major type of writing within certain paragraphs used for dramatic purposes often. This is description. And you will notice, of course, if you look in that lovely book for which you paid all this money, the compact reader, you will find that this, the subject headings of the different paragraphs are exposition, argument, narration, and description. Have a look. I am summarizing the biggies. OK. Uh, you can trust me on this. OK. And of course, what is it with description? It gives us a very vivid mental picture, an image in our minds as if there were a camera inside our heads, which maybe there is sometimes, yes? Description does what? Unlike its second cousin narration, it does not have a great deal of events or happenings in it. Good narration appeals to and engages our senses. Sight, smell, hearing, taste, touch. One or all of them. But, sorry, that's good description, yes? Uh, engages our senses. But is description there just for the joy of giving us a mental picture? Yeah. Of course not. No. Is good description thank you, somehow linked, like all our other building blocks, to what? The message, the thesis. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, good description, of course, can be very enjoyable to read. But we'll find that we don't see much of it as a major type of writing. What are the second cousins that are our major type? Exposition, argument. argument, and perhaps some narration. Okay, now along with these, what have we been told 
are the important aspects I, mm -hmm. of classic paragraph structure. Have we been told that there is a really, really important aspect called tone, and that is the emotional component of the written page. Here it is on our handout called Reading and Writing Skills. You should have read and digested these this past weekend. I warned you, read all my handouts. Pay attention to them. Yes? If I'm in danger of being fired for abusing the photocopier, use the opportunity. Yes? Thank you. Now, what is it about tone that we wish to be so aware of? It conveys emotions. It conveys the writer's feelings, his attitudes. And tone is kind of like the flu. It passes from one person to the next. In other words, the tone often shares the writer's emotions with us. So if the writer is concerned and critical and matter of fact and maybe even quite analytical, yes, will he share those attitudes or emotional stances with us? Of course. What's a stance, S-T-A-N-C-E, -E, an attitude, yes? Okay, and then of course, uh, when we share his feelings, do we get more involved with the reading, of course. Uh, so you can see where tone is an important hook for us as readers, because remember, writers write for readers unless they're writing a personal diary that nobody will ever see unless they die suddenly, <laughs> yes? Or unless they're putting it on Twitter or one of those places, yes? You know, those people who don't value privacy and they just put it all out there. Generally speaking, uh, what happens? Unless you're writing something very private, you're writing for a reader. And professional writers are writing for a reader. And is tone a way by which they can hook the reader? Why? Because our attitude is then colored by the attitude that the tone communicates. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. OK, now we were told if it killed us, we were going to read Truth and Consequences for today. How many of us have read it? Uh, yes or no? Mm -hmm. yeah. Raise your hands. You do my homework, you know. You don't just yeah. come here to relax. Yes? <laughs> if you don't read the homework, the class will be much less valuable to you. It's that simple. Oh, yes. Okay, we read it. It was from the Compass newspaper. And we were asked to read it and of course, check with our best friends the dictionaries, yes? Or our magic phones which have dictionaries in them, yes? On any words whose meanings we don't have, we, we don't have in our heads. I told you that you must do this. I even told you I threatened you and said that one day I may come in here with a final graded quiz uh, on vocabulary items, yes or no? Yes. So therefore, I assume you've read this before. Any reactions to it? What do you think was the writer's emotional attitude? What were his feelings in writing this short editorial essay? He had a lot of feelings, Shakira tell us. He might have seemed sarcastic, he might have seemed critical, he might have been very assertive. Assertive, critical, insightful. Did he give us food for thought, insights, yes? Maybe sarcastic a little bit at times, yes or no? We will not check our phones in my class. We will turn them off wherever we are sitting. We will not get a chance to go over these foundation discussions again. Full stop. 
okay. Any other attitudes? Is he matter of fact? Is he concerned? Yes. Uh, okay. And does he, is he mature and insightful in some ways? Yes. No, sorry. My friend, this is what happens when you're sitting down. Okay, thank you. In this nice little booklet, did we get printouts? I think I got them from Google. Yes? Uh, for transition words, the glue words, the connecting words, yes? Which are so important. Transitions, you're in transit in Miami, you're going to visit your mother wherever. Yes? Uh, transitions are connections. Yes? The transition words do what? They create what we call coherence or a smooth flow of thought. Uh, we have lots of them. Can transitions connect two words, two sentences, even two paragraphs? Even three paragraphs? Yes, there. Same thing. The old-fashioned word that, <laughs> yes, I learned, learned in school was conjunctions. They call them transitions. Yes. Can I have one of those? Yeah, but you'd have to come to the office for one of them. Okay. I'm not sure if I have any extras here. I've been trying to cut down on the weight. Okay. And what else do we notice? In this booklet, do we also have a list of tone attitudes and words? Now, could we ever make a complete list of these? No. Why? Because human emotions are countless. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we had something from um, Shakira. Anybody else on what you felt this writer's attitudes were? I didn't like that. I just thought he was sort of biased. You thought he was biased? Can somebody see if we can make it cooler in here? Nicholas, <laughs> you're like tall. I feel like he isn't the age of the people. Like, I feel like he's older. He's older? Yeah, then. What a crime. Then, uh, <laughs> yes. No, I'm just saying, but like. No, no, no. Your lecturer yeah, is I older. Think, I feel like he's. He can't relate. Like, yeah, he can't relate. Like. It's part of the problem I mean, in his, you say he can't relate to the problems of the young people of Cayman. Uh, it's part of the problem, the length of the essay. In other words, to deal with this in more than a one-sided way, did he need to have actually given himself more length for the discussion? Is that part of the problem? Well, the proof we can get about the crimes we can get from our police people mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. No problem with that. Unwed, you know, unwed mothers. Pregnancies and unwed pregnancies. Okay. Is that a thorny issue? Because, of course, let me throw this question at you. And is that part of what you perceive as a bias, Shakira? Is there, and I read something very interesting coming out of the World Health Organization years ago, which talked about single motherhood in America. And of course, they went on and on. They gave themselves <laughs> lots of length, yes? But did they make an important point? Mm -hmm. Namely, there is a difference between a 16-year-old or a 15-year-old who is pregnant and has no earning power, no family framework for assistance with the baby, and no governmental assistance as well. There's a difference between that unwed mother and the unwed mother who is maybe 20 or 21, who has a bit of maturity, right? And who has the older extended family behind her. Uncles, aunties, grandmas, grandfathers. In other words, parenthood is for two. I think by now we realize that fact. Parenthood is for not just two, it's for many. You've heard the expression that says, it takes a village to raise a child, yes? Mm -hmm. You've never heard that one? Yeah, ma'am. No. 
Okay. Uh, does Mr. Borden in his book, uh, Mr. Roy Borden, talk about the Cayman Islands in transition? Again, that word transition. In a process of moving from one place to the next. And does he also talk about this in some of his speeches? Namely, if there is a breakdown in the traditional extended family, yes, which included the nuclear family, mother and father and children, but it also included grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins, all of these people who in actual fact could perform parental roles. Say for instance, did I have an older cousin uh, who was like an older sister and like a mother to me when I was growing up? She wasn't that much older than I was, but did she function in that way? Yeah. Yes. Now, various aspects, economic and otherwise, social and um, otherwise, have actually impacted on the Caymanian family, the traditional family, yes? Mm -hmm. And our studies still being done on this, of course. But is that part of the problem then, Shakira, that you perceive as a bias? There's lots of issues. Actually. Okay, tell us more. Loudly well, come I this way so we can get it on the iPad, please. You mentioned the unwed pregnancy, uh -huh. right? Then he also says that there's a breakdown of, I don't know if it's a he or she, breakdown of the nuclear family, which is another thing. The breakdown of the two-parented right. family. Right. That is visible, isn't it? Right. People who work in social services will tell us about that if you want to do any interviews. Mm -hmm. There you are. Right. Yes. And then, of course, he mentioned art influencing in a negative way. Art, as and in television. I'm not right, sure television is always art, is it? it? It probably, he's probably, or she probably relating more to like music or mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And um, and then the, the the writer goes on to say, um, Loudly, please. That yeah. it's that you know certain factors does not add up to being a criminal or a murderer, but. When I was reading it, I was thinking, if you happen to go through a series of certain events, then it possibly could make you one. So I thought that the writer was definitely biased. Um, um, biased. Did you one-sided? When you hostile did you look at his closing? I don't. I'm not sure. I put it as strongly as hostile. I mean, I but is know. he quite aggressive at times? He, yeah, he. You know, he's saying he's blunt. B l u n t. That's a good yeah. word. He said these are not good boys. If if they had, if he had said something else, or maybe. But the boys who know, shoot their so-called friends and neighbors, mm -hmm. and gang up and go and beat up people and shoot them. I don't think they're good boys. No. I have to Are there better solutions to conflict than violence and murder? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's not Absolutely. good. I agree with him but, there. But I just thought that the writer was sort of irresponsible. Um, sort of in his Sort of. I'm not sure I'd use the word irresponsible. Yeah, because I, I when I'm reading something like this, I want I almost take offense because I need to know the facts. And if you're gonna write something, I need to know the facts. So you feel how many of us agree with Shakira that he needed to put in more of these other big aspects of classic paragraph structure, namely what? Well-selected supporting yeah. details. Statistical details. Facts and evidence, yeah. facts and statistics. Mm -hmm. Maybe he needed more length. Do we come back to the length factor again? Are there some topics that actually demand more detailed discussion? Okay. Uh, to avoid one-sidedness. Uh, okay, and he talks about the numbers of young men who were killed right. within a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he points out the irony that's the that... Fact. That's the only fact. Um, but then actually, then can we get the figures like on... American television, he said bad influences. Bad influences. Actually, do we, can we get the facts and figures on teenage pregnancy? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can. And... If we want some horrifying 
supporting details. Talk to any prison officers you know. And you will notice, I, I had the pleasure, the privilege of teaching a group of them at the prison last year this time. And they told me, and they wrote in their reports, that in actual fact, more than 50% of the young men in the prison for whatever crimes had never known their father, had never had a good relationship with the, any trustworthy good father substitute, and some of them were in desperate need of a mature conversation with a mature man whose attitudes they could trust. That it was amazing how many of these young men actually wanted to talk. Now, are we looking at a bias in society? Let me just throw this question at you. Uh, Mother's Day is a big deal. But do we have a tendency to undervalue Father's Day? Mm -hmm. And is it a sign that we actually, not just in Cayman, but throughout the Caribbean, maybe in America too, hey, Mother's Day is big in America, that we actually undervalue the meaning of fatherhood? Mm -hmm. Now, does Mr. Obama nail it and say, fatherhood is not just a biological act? or something like that. In other words, fatherhood is a very, very, very important role. It's not just providing the sperm. Now, when he talks about the single motherhood, did he need Shakira to go into the fatherhood values, the values of true fatherhood right there? Would that have helped? It it would have it would have. it would have helped me. I would have been more convinced if I'd gone more statistical data. Uh-huh. And not just with the violent crime, but with just average folks. Because then that would give me a clear idea of When you say average folks, you mean people who don't get involved in criminal right. activity. Exactly, because you just made a good point. You said that the prison, fifty percent of them yeah. did not have any fathers, so I wanna know out of prison, what about the other 50% or 75 French children? Actually, it was more than they just said the majority. I <coughs> neutralized it by saying 50, more than 50%. Okay, well, you see, my point, okay. no, I, if, if you're going to convince me as a reader, then I need to, I need to know more statistical detail. More okay, track. so we needed more supporting details um, as an important part of classic paragraph structure. Do you see why then we call it classic paragraph structure? Are there times when we actually need more supporting details mm -hmm. to convince us and to convince us along with Shakira as to whether this man is biased or not? Is this published in the newspaper? Yes, of course. I wish I saw it. Really? Yes. Oh my God. Do I have, have some more for us? Really? Yes. Like yes, there. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, that's an Sorry? I yeah. mean, yeah, like, I agree with what she's saying because basically what he's doing is jumping to conclusion and judging these, uh, these oh. individuals when he really doesn't know what's going on within their personal okay. lives. Okay. Uh, consider me a kind of old fashioned person. Mm -hmm. I consider murder as a capital crime. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. And I consider that if you commit premeditated murder, this is not an accident. This is not self-defense. It is a choice. You have committed a lethal crime. You deserve to be punished to the full extent of the law of the society you are in. And if you are looking at it on a moral level and you believe there is another life, which I do, if you believe we have a soul, that we are body, mind, and soul, you have committed a sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know? So that aspect of it I agree with. Uh, do we have records? I don't know if you know about this one some years ago. 
up in East End, this guy put on online a picture of himself with his fingers like a gun. Yeah. And he, what the report said was that he, he was into some small time drug dealings and he had, I think, his cousins as competition and he told them he was going to kill them. And he went home, got his gun, and emptied the gun in the two of them. All bullets. Okay. Ah. I think that the writer is, is another reason why I'm saying bias is because you can go in any country and write the same exact thing about that country. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? I don't deny that. I don't deny that this applies shockingly across the board. And in fact, if you're looking at America, do we have these awful, awful cases of these people who take these, what do you call them? They're not M16s. They're more deadly than M16s. They spit out, is it 300 bullets at one time? You remember the, Christ, the Christmas murder yeah. at the schools? You remember recently the, the one for where they were doing Batman? The movie, oh, yeah, no. uh -huh, at the movie house. Do you realize that that guy will not be executed, even though he had rigged up a bomb in his apartment so that if the police went to investigate, they would have been killed too? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, do we have the Boston Marathon, mm -hmm. where yeah. these people coolly left the bombs in the backpacks and walked away? Are there victims? Not that many people died. One little boy died in, his, in, the, in sight of his father. Yes? Uh-huh. Uh, one of them got killed. The brother apparently also ran him over in the escape attempt, yes. The police also shot him. But one of them is still alive and well in the Boston prison. They're still debating the capital punishment decree. What I'm saying is, are there some things that we do for which we must truly face the consequences? Yes. Mm -hmm. So his title, at least, yeah. is useful. Yeah. I accept your argument, uh, Shakira, that he needed to include more supporting details, facts and evidence, examples and illustrations, mm -hmm. yes or no, yeah. provable mm -hmm. facts and evidence and statistics. But Shakira, I don't think he has a particular bias against Cayman if we look at other countries, yes, and see this same pattern emerging. The trouble is, and I agree, he needed to lengthen the essay some more. Mm -hmm. So as to do what? To give us more room for exploration and discussion, for exposition. Okay, let us move on. Okay. Mm -hmm. He says some, not all. Some, not all. I am not sure. I, he says some. Yeah. And are there police people who might agree with him? Because do the police people actually see what we don't see and what will never get reported in the newspapers? Now, some doesn't have to mean the majority, you know. It doesn't have to mean 50%. It just means some. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the questions now on page one. Sorry, page two got copied before page one. The person doing this photocopying can't count. Okay. Now, if you did not read the passage for homework, you will have a problem here. Okay. Now, it says, select, are there people who do things without reading the directions? Do these people exist? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. Can they read? Yes. But they do not read directions. It says, please address the following after carefully reading the above passage. Select one answer or more than one, depending on the options and your reading of them. Read all items carefully. Fill in the blank spaces and so on as is relevant to each question. Write clearly. Feel free to write marginal notes if you see fit. Did you write some notes, Shakira? No, I thought about it. Okay, well, maybe you've told us some of it, but <laughs> we'll continue the discussion. Are we looking at major types of writing in this passage? Examples of all. Narrative tells a story involving events or actions to convey a message. Does he tell some little stories yeah. of things that have actually provably happened? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How many of us circled A, narrative? We should have. Okay. Uh, what about B, argumentative, persuasive? He seeks to convince or persuade. <laughs> he seeks to, but whether or not he absolutely succeeded is another matter. Yeah. Yes, but my students are reading critically and analytically, and you stress he's seeking to do this. Mm -hmm. To what extent he succeeds in convincing us, that's another matter. Okay, but it is argumentative or persuasive. Then, of course, the biggie. Expository, explanatory, analytic. Yes or no? Does he no. expose? No. Yes. 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 But he doesn't have any. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So like, I'm not second. He analyzes. <laughs> he examines. He explains. Mm -hmm. But you feel that as a total exposition of the total issue, you it know, fails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but would you still accept C? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And just for the records, dears, you will find this kind of question popping up constantly. And just with your eyes closed and your hands tied behind your back, just tick both exposition and argument as major writing types. Just do it. Okay? Whether or not he succeeds in convincing us, no, that's another matter. And I think we've all agreed, and I admit, that this needed to be longer. This needed more supporting details in order to do what? In order to actually, truly, analyze the issue fully and convince us. Okay. I just Sorry? I just realized these are supposed to be paragraphs, these number things. Yes. The paragraph? The major type of writing used in paragraph two. But they're not paragraphs or sentences. Uh, but are, can a sentence be a paragraph? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh huh. Are we looking at paragraph two? Is the one that says there are consequences for our actions during our lives, and for those who believe in various forms of afterlife, there are consequences after our death as well. Is it highly argumentative? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Although some people who say there's no afterlife, we don't have a soul, this is it. Uh, I've met people like that. Uh, it's argumentative. Are we looking at, uh, for that, that question then, are we looking at argument and persuasion? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. How many of us accepted A, but we felt that C was also relevant? That argument and persuasion combined with some supportive exposition when he says, for those of us who believe there is an afterlife, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So either A or C would have done, or D. Yes or no? Yeah. 
How many of us chose A alone? Raise hand. Or would have chosen it? Yes. How many of us agreed with either C or D? Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, the above, okay, foregoing paragraphs, three paragraphs, yes. Paragraph 2, paragraph 8, and 11, yes. Shall we go back to those paragraphs? Why did I select them? Did I have a reason for selecting them? Hopefully, yes. 2 says, <laughs> there are consequences for our actions during our life. And for those who, of us who believe in various forms of afterlife, there are consequences after our death as well. And then, number eight says, make no mistake, however, the current problem with young Caymanian men is closely linked to the breakdown of Cayman's nuclear family structure and the sense of values that it provided, that keyword, values. Values you learn in sociology and psychology are the things that people feel are valuable in life. Yes? Mm -hmm. Do values take us into the field of right and wrong and ethics? Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. As a result, some, not all, some of Cayman's youth has lost a basic sense of right and wrong. And then paragraph 11 says, the truth is these are not good boys. Mm -hmm. The people who have lost the sense of right and wrong plus the girls who follow them. Our society should bear some of the blame. Concession, yes, I admit it. Yes, mm -hmm. but ultimately, we are all responsible for our own actions, and there are terrible consequences for a life of crime. Mm -hmm. Is he, in actual fact, bringing home the argumentative pieces and tying them all up in that closing paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are we looking at a closing thesis paragraph? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the question then. Uh, these three paragraphs are for simple but strong topic sentences only. That keyword only. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to it. Yes? Uh, are we looking at some topic sentences? But are we also looking at some contenders for this statement? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Pay attention, my friends. We will not have the time to do this kind of breakdown again, together, again. Next time around, I'm giving it to you. Yes. Our strong thesis paragraphs for this essay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would we agree with that? Yes. yes. Highly argumentative. And to some extent, they succeed in persuading us, right? Remember, the thesis statement is what? It spotlights main issues, and it does what else? It is persuasive, it's argumentative, it's assertive. It may even be aggressive, yes? We don't have to agree with it, but do we have to recognize it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All use critical, deeply concerned, incisive, and insightful tones. Incisive means cutting to the chase, yeah. getting to the heart of the matter, as he sees it, of course. Mm -hmm. Did we, would we accept number C as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are well defined in options B and C above? Yes. Mm -hmm are directed against educated parents only. Rubbish. Uh, does he choose the parents that he discusses? Educated, uneducated, doesn't yeah. matter. Do we need a formal education, a PhD in science, to know the difference between right and wrong? No. 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 So how many of us would have accepted happily B, C, and D? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. You circled B only? No. Yeah. Oh, because you mean that encapsulated B and C. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you very much. So D would have worked too. Okay.
Can we continue? Yes? Mm -hmm. Number four. Uh, did you check the AC? Is it working? It is? Good grief. Okay, number four. Please circle the options which present the major tones found in this essay. Access, uh, assess all options carefully. Use your initiative and imagination. If you are going to accept an option, you must accept both. Okay, am I going to keep quiet for a minute and are you going to look at it and then tell me? Some of us are ready, but some of us are not. Some of us had a look at the homework. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are we doing? Uh, remember, you have to accept both in order to accept the option. Yes? Oh, excuse me. I need to turn this off, don't I? No. We have to accept both. Yes? Okay. Biased and hostile. Yeah. Uh, Shakira, you would accept biased, one-sided. Yeah. But would we all accept hostile? No, no. Does he cross the line into hostility? No. 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 Critical and assertive. Yeah. Does he have a point of view that he's asserting? Yeah. Whether we agree with him is another matter, but does he make himself heard? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so B, matter of fact and frank or honest. Is he frank and honest about his, his opinion? Yes. opinion? Yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Deeply concerned. Yeah. Yes. yes. Very much so. Uh, sarcastic and satirical. No. 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 Uh, sarcasm is a hostile, critical tone whose um, purpose is to hurt. Do we have? Satirical? Do we have? Sorry, dear. Do we have in our nice little booklet a graph that shows us definitions? Yeah, here we are. Okay. Uh, satire makes a joke in order to convey the criticism. And those of us who have gone ahead and looked at the unicorn in the garden will notice that was satirical. It made us laugh, but it made a criticism, didn't it? Yes or no? Uh-huh. Yeah. So we don't want that. There's no humor here at all. Uh, we might think he's sarcastic at times when he says, these are not good boys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But often, but not always, ironic. Remember, irony points out contradictions. Go back. Please hold, up, hold it up for me there. Go. Yes, remember that one. Go back to it. Irony is a tone, but also a way of seeing life, of thinking outside the box. It points out contradictions of some kind. Is he pointing out an ongoing contradiction? That the mothers of such young men who end up in prison in court say, oh, they're good boys. This is my son. He wouldn't hurt a fly. But the mothers of the victims are in the hospital crying. They're in the morgue crying. They're in the funeral home crying, if you get my point. Mm -hmm. Yes. So isn't it often but not always pointing out contradictions? Yeah. The contradiction is, People blame television. Oh my gosh, American television is so violent. And they blame the rap musicians. Oh, these people are just purveyors of violence. Yes? Uh, they blame the expatriates. These people are taking our best jobs. They blame the teachers and the education system and the Department of Education. These people haven't got a clue what they're doing. Yes? And you've heard the expression, when in doubt, blame the government. When in doubt, blame slavery. When in doubt, 
blame colonialism. When in doubt, blame mama. Well, slavery and colonialism yeah. will cover race, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, when in doubt, blame mama. That's gender. Yes? But never, never, never blame yourself for what you actually did. You pulled the trigger. Yes? You drove so drunk that you didn't have a clue what you were doing. You chose to get in that car having had X drinks, probably on an empty stomach. You chose it. So, often ironic, convic convinced and straightforward or blunt, yes. He is convinced. Whether or not he is convincing mm -hmm. to all of us is another matter. But is he convinced? Straightforward, yeah. blunt. Mm -hmm. Blunt means almost brutally direct, almost brutally frank. You understand? Mm -hmm. All of the above, never. <laughs> My friends, be careful with the all of the above ones. They are often trap questions. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Analyze each one separately. Thank you. Paragraphs 4, 5, and 6. Let's go back. 4, 5, and 6 say, The mothers of the young men invariably say they were good boys, led, away by, led astray by bad influences like American television. Always blame America. American music, the same. Or just hanging out with the wrong crowd. We hear that some of these young men had to turn to crime because expatriates were taking the job they should have had. Uh, and are we getting into the job debate here? Are there many, many jobs that are taken by, are you listening to me, expatriates that Caymanians don't want? Honesty time here, folks. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? I, 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 you know, you're touching on some really such a subject. That I'm asking. It, in some cases, yes. I said many jobs. No. I said many, many, not all. The garden work, these mm -hmm. people who are in this hot sun, mm -hmm. working for the gardening services that pay them, I am sure, almost nothing. Uh, some of them Caymanians, but there are many non-Caymanians. Uh, what else? Uh? The what? The question I'm asking, to what extent are jobs taken by expatriates always jobs desired by Caymanians? No. Or are they some of the dirty work of the society, if you want to put it that way? No way. Shakira. All right, all right. If you want me to answer, <laughs> I said some of the dirty work. Okay, listen, that's a tough subject. Because, it is. Because the argument is, is that there are Caymanians who would work. Who in would do dirty it. Dirty jobs, you call them. However, if, however, yeah, however, employers also have a responsibility ah. to pay them insurance and pension and on, on, on a work permit they can kind of mani manipulate thank you yeah. thank you so thank you they chose to go they choose to go that road thank you manipulate them by working them to the ground thank so you thank you that they're right and they pay no overtime. Exactly. And they uh -huh. really argue and make the employer look really terrible. So they're a uh -huh. story. And do I have one for English 301, the advanced composition course that talks about that and also says this interesting thing. Many employers, Caymanians and non-Caymanians, would prefer and do prefer to hire people on work permits because people on work permits are very easily controlled, manipulated, yeah, and exploited. Yeah, 
So there's a control factor. Okay, but is he making a point that some of these young men had to turn to crime because expatriates were taking the job they should have had? I would have said, the question is, of course, I would have made another concession on the other side of the debate that said, however, this is a complex issue and makes us query also how desired these jobs really were. It varies. At the top level of the pay scale, at the top level of the workplace, where there are highly trained demands mm -hmm. for workers. Is there a kind of glass ceiling there? Is that where Caymanians bounce up against the glass ceiling? The top highest levels of, of the workplace. Um, is that where, uh, let me ask you another question, Shakira. Mm -hmm. Is that where the stereotype about Caymanians mm -hmm. yeah. are very strong. Yeah. Yeah. Caymanians are un unreliable. Mm -hmm. They will not come to work on mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. They will always be ill just before a long weekend mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. after a long weekend, mm -hmm. and so on and so on and so on. At the, let me ask you the other question. At the bottom level, at the bottom level of the pay scale, if you have a pyramid, the top and the bottom, mm -hmm. is that where we see a lot of stereotypes about the expatriates? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. The Jamaicans are violent. They are, uh, they slick. Jamaicans are violent and slick. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And so on. Yes? Okay. Um, have we heard a lot of those? So what I'm saying is, um, is this an example, uh, that paragraph about the workforce? Again, where more supporting details were needed? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Is that a serious example of how brevity didn't necessarily have, have you know, any use. Did he need to discuss that more? Yeah. Does Mr. Bodden also point out that, and many other articles and writers point out, that in actual fact, the money from the work permits and the work permit applications and the residency applications and the Cayman status applications, this money is big money. It's a big source of revenue for the government, whether or not the people who apply get what they want. Mm -hmm. And that money is a big source of revenue which the government has come to depend on. So is the expatriate workforce issue a very complex one? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah. Much too complex for <coughs> one sentence. Yeah. Yes. Then, of course, he says, uh, we hear that the schools fail these young men and giving them the basic skills. Is that where we're at? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, of course, the school issue is ooh, very complex. And then, but does he, is he doing something we read about in classic paragraph structure, that there are two sides to every story? And the concession admits that there are many sides to every debate. But the refutation zaps those opposing views and does what? Reinforces the thesis message. So are we looking at paragraph, yes, four, five, and six as concessions to opposing views? Yes or no? Are you with me, dears? Please sit up, take a deep breath. We're here for a while longer. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Are we looking then for our refutation to zap those opposing views? Gentlemen in the back, are you with us? 
get. And does the refutation come? Seldom, however, do we hear that the parents had anything to do with why these young men turned to gangs and a life of criminal activity. What are the key words there? Seldom and parents. Yes or no? How many of us underline those? Remember, when you're reading carefully, don't read passively and let the words just flow around you. Highlight them. If it looks important to you on the first reading, mark it. Yes? And does number seven lead us into the thesis paragraph, which is paragraph eight? Yes or no? The refutation. Does it lead us into the thesis paragraph? My dear friends, pay attention to me. Okay. Uh, do we have to move very fast between now and those 20 points for the midterm exam? Trust me, we do. And do we have to nail everything right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So let's have a look. Paragraphs 4, 5, and 6 all offer concessions to opposing views yeah. or admissions that there are many sides to this complex debate about crime in Cayman. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. let's face it, it's easier to sell drugs than it is to actually go work in McDonald's. Oh. It is? Of course. Well, I don't know if easier is the word. Uh, it's fast money. It's, is, it's fast money. I'm, yeah, all right. I'm trying to think like, you know, an 18 year old. I suppose so. It looks, yeah. yeah. But, but there are a lot of. No, no, no. But remember, <laughs> the, the people, Shakira, the people who made these choices young don't understand that these things are like quicksand. The crimes are like quicksand. It's easier to get into them than to get out of them. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the mafia, you know? Yeah. Okay. Are we looking at number B? Reveal the writer's hostile, racist bias against young Caymanians. No, we can't go all the way with that. No. Uh, does he mention race? No. No. Does he cross the line into hostility, or is he just deeply concerned? Deeply concerned. Yeah. Present varied common arguments about the causes of yes. crime, yeah. especially among the youth yeah. in Cayman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are all linked to paragraph 8, where the writer offers a refutation of the preceding views and a reinforcement of his thesis statement and stance? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Uh, number eight says what? Make no mistake, however, the problem is. Yeah. In other words, are your concessions to your opposing views a balance of the other side of the argument? And we look at them over here, and then the refutation leads us smoothly into what? The thesis position. And is the thesis position right there, clear and loud, whether or not we agree with it in paragraph 8? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah. Absolutely. And what about number E? Are all similarly linked to paragraph 11, yeah. the writer's final thesis paragraph? Yeah. 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 I think I'd say they're yeah. not good. Yeah. He's still end up saying they're not good. Um, in other words, the bottom line in paragraph 11 is uh, take it or leave it. The choices we make now will stay with us forever. Uh -huh. Okay, so we would have chosen A, C, D, and E. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay, now paragraph 10 contains and is developed by, let's go back to paragraph 10. Ah, yes. Yes, art, or so-called art, can influence an unguided mind in negative ways. Yes? Mm -hmm. We see a movie like Scarface. 
-hmm. And we see the glamour of the drug trade, mm -hmm. but we don't see or remember the violence of it mm -hmm. and what a bloody business it is and what a nasty death Scarface himself died. <laughs> yes? Yes? Uh, yes, not being able to read or write can put a person at a severe disadvantage in the workplace. Not just in the workplace, in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do studies from America tell us that more than 50% of the people who end up in prison, not just as one-time offenders, but as repeat offenders, mm -hmm. have never mastered literacy. They cannot read and write properly. Imagine if you can't read properly and you go into a big supermarket. How confusing and frustrating this can be. Yeah? Okay. Then, what else does he tell us? Uh, where are we at? Paragraph 10. Yeah, not, yeah. Yes, not being able to get a job is demoralizing and a recipe for disaster for a young man. And that is true. And we come back to the workplace issue and the role that the employers themselves play. I would rather hire this person on the work permit that I can control rather and maybe even abuse or certainly exploit than hire this young Cayman young man. And I don't intend to invest in training either. I want the skills right now. Right away. Yes? Okay. So it's a complex thing. Does he give three concessions to opposing views about some common causes of crime? Yes or no? Yeah. But does he also give a refutation that reinforces positive moral values and ethical work views? Yes or no? Yes. In paragraph 10, does he zap it and say, but none of these factors is an excuse for becoming a gang member, let alone a thief, robber, and worse yet, a murderer. Yeah? Okay. And... Uh, Number C, I'm going to shut up and let you find the transitions. But do we get number D as well? A yes. persuasive rebuttal built on the concessions and the refutation. Yes or no? Yeah. Is your rebuttal in a debate mm -hmm. the point where you zap the opposing views? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Mm hmm Okay, and then what about E? Are we looking at the use of rational, persuasive, insightful, and mature tones? Yes. Okay, I'm going to keep quiet now, and you are going to find the transitions. Now tell me, if we are not talking out two sides of our mouths, if we are seriously trying to evaluate all the different sides to a complex debate or issue. Are we going to try and admit that there are opposing views? But what do we want to do? We want to use transitions that give contrast. Yes or no? In other words, to show that we're not talking out of two sides of our mouths, but we are evaluating Seriously, an issue, a complicated issue. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll keep quiet and you're going to find them. Do we have a list of transitions available to us? Yes, we do. But will common sense always help us? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes or no, folks? Okay. You don't have a list? Can you share with her for me, please? Uh, you didn't get this in your other group yet. Which, 
Which one there? Oh, the course outline, that's online. I didn't waste paper on that because I had so much else that I wanted to give you. But I need a story. Yeah. All right. Can we dare? Um, if you come to the office with me, I'll give you them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh huh. Are we looking at transitions that suggest contrast? Yeah. However. Thank you, but. However. However. Thank you, but. However. What about our old faithful and? Yeah. And. Yeah. But, however, and. What about yes? Yes. Yes, I admit. Yes, I admit. Yes, I admit. Indeed. Thank you. And where else, dear? Even so. We're in paragraph 10. Paragraph 10. What about let alone? Yeah. I have let alone. Let alone, yeah. but yes, However, yes, or, or thank you, another old faithful, or, or. yeah. Um. However, wasn't there, was it? No. 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 But it's there in spirit, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> However, yeah. it doesn't, you know, we don't accept all of this stuff. There's more to this than meets the eye. But however, wasn't really in paragraph 10, but it was suggested, wasn't it? Are we looking at, in paragraph 10, he's looking at many sides of a complex issue. We've argued about it, and we want to reject a biased point of view, but do we want a writer to try his best to do what? analyze as many sides of the issue as possible. Yes, yes, yes. But, and, our old faithfuls, but, and, and, let alone, and of course, or. Are you with me, my friend? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. And then does he wrap it up in the closing paragraph? The truth is these are not good boys. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Can we go back now for a few quiet moments and go over this and see if there's anything else that we'd like to say about this one? Nicholas, yeah, you. Uh huh. Gentlemen in the back, you've been awfully quiet. What are you saying? Sorry, there, yes? Can I please Yes, of course. If you need to just run out, just raise your hand and say, excuse me, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, anything else? Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10 now, looking at this essay, if we had gotten it as a pop-up quiz for final grades, with no dictionaries allowed, how difficult would it have been? 10 is the hardest, 1 is the easiest. Where would we place this one on the 1 to 10 scale? Am I coming up with a harder one next time? Am I coming up with one that goes up the scale? Of course I am. Is this about a 7? Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I would think. agree. For me personally, I don't know about anybody else. Is this a 7 or a 7.5? 7. Okay, not 7.5, but 7. But 7. <laughs> okay, but, my friend, remember, after midterms, exams come our essays. Is this food for thought for essay number one? Are we looking at causes of youth crime in Cayman or causes of crime? 
problems, survival problems of young people in Cayman, both Caymanians and non-Caymanians. Yes? Let me ask you a question. Is it true that many um, wrongdoers and criminals, hardcore criminals, mm -hmm. target young people deliberately? Yeah. In all societies? Yes, of course. Because they won't follow us. They won't follow us, and let's face it, how we see things when we're 16 or 15 or 17 or even 14, no, 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 is not how we see them when we are 25 or 30 or 35. Do we have more, or 40 or 45? <laughs> Do we have, and remember, life begins at 40, my friend. Trust me, yes. Okay. Uh, is it true, in other words, that the longer we're on this planet, is the more time we have to observe yeah. consequences? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And to learn the truth behind our mistakes. Okay. I'm just throwing that out. Okay, <laughs> just food for thought, yes. Okay, any, any other comments on this one? Anything that we noticed? <laughs> yeah, and truth and consequences. Anything else that we noticed? Nothing? Anything else we want to share? How about you? Yes or no? <laughs> okay. Uh, shall we take a deep breath, sit up straight, and give ourselves a few more minutes in this lovely room? Where's the clock? Oh. Okay. My watch is supposed to be five minutes fast. Okay. It isn't really. Oh, yes, dear. You'll soon come back? Okay. Uh, can we then, when we go home, Make some notes in our planners or our diaries or whatever we have on what we gained from this one. Can anybody off the top of your head tell me what did you gain from this one? Oh, before that, can I just close this up? What's coming up next? The unicorn in the garden. Oh, so we must read. Read it and see you didn't get that no oh, we're coming to the story saki later how many of us got the book found it online and read the lumber room or started am i coming to you and this is a warning my friend it's going to happen if i'm in the hospital i'll send the questions to you with my chairperson are we coming with some brainstorming questions on the lumber room? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brainstormers. Mm -hmm. So do we need to read it? Yes, we do. Yeah. Huh? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, but for next time, when do we meet again? Thursday? Yeah. Wednesday. Are we going to read the unicorn in the garden? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And will we read, no, no, we got the handout, oh, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. And are we going to read our handouts on tone in this one there that I keep borrowing from you? Uh-huh. Are we going to read this? Yeah. On the surface, the unicorn in the garden looks like rubbish. But rethink it in terms of irony and satire. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, can we close this off now? And then you'll tell me about any final views you have on what you gained. Stop packing up, please. Uh, pay attention. What did you gain from today? Please tell me. Okay, I'm closing this now. Somebody tell um, me. Oh, do I close this? Oh, this. You yeah. mean? Press there, and then like open it. She still had the memo, the record on, you know. Yeah. Okay.